second ceremony. Fire off. We're editing. editing all this later, right? No edits. Awesome. Fucking live, in or, live or die. Sink or swim. All right, here we go. This is the first experiment into MDP sessions. Uh, Modern Day Pirates International sitting down with order members and then other individuals and just talking about life and interesting things. And we're firing it all off here with order member Larry McDaniel from Lafayette, Louisiana, owner of Just Ink Tattoo. Uh, this guy's MDP as fuck, does it all, and we're going to talk about it. So uh, thank you for putting up with this. <laughs> Thanks for having me out here. Um, I want to jump right into it. We're not going to fuck around. Uh, first and foremost, how did you get into motorcycles? Motorcycles. My first experience on a motorcycle, my dad had a Honda CB900 big cruising bike, and I was about 13 or 14. Wanted to ride begged him to let me ride he wouldn't let me ride he said when you're big enough to take it then you can go ride on it so i propped it up beside the building cranked it up jumped on it and took off nice and nice. been hooked ever since love it love it well i was gonna ask you what's your best story from motorcycles but that might be it i don't that's, know that's probably the the best one right on. I've, I've had some cool stories had some sketchy stories some close <laughs> calls and stuff but yeah. Um, the best story is probably the day I got my motorcycle license at the DMV. Um, road did the little riding test, passed everything. The last little test was an emergency stop. Come flying up on the lady, she threw her hands up for me to stop. And my brand new rear tire I put on that morning didn't want to stop. <laughs> I laid the bike down at the DMV the day I got my license. They still gave you still your license? Still got my license. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Peter. Peter, uh, the kid you met tonight. I uh, took his motorcycle training class at uh, San Diego Harley Davidson. They have the kind of program there. Breaks his foot with the motorcycle his last day of his <laughs> class. And fucking leaves, lays the bike over on his own foot, breaks his foot. or I don't remember the story exactly, but they still gave him his license. There yeah, you go. That's all it counts. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you ride? It's the best therapy there is. You, know, you have a bad day, jump on the bike. You know, you having a bad week, jump on the bike. No, nothing beats you know, the wind in your face and everything else goes out the window for a couple hours or however long you can ride. Yeah, you pretty much got to be focused on that. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you can throw some music on if you if your bike is so equipped or you have headphones or whatever and really just get lost in that. It, it is a beautiful thing. What are you riding right now? I uh, currently own a 2012 uh, Harley Road Glide and a 2001 Indian Scout. Yeah, I can attest to the scout riding pretty good. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice ride. It's a nice ride. You got some people you ride with at home? or? Uh, yeah, one of my buddies, uh, Ryan Turner, he's also an order member. Uh, me and him cut up quite regularly. Mm. I got a few other buddies I ride with when I get the chance. The unofficial Bayou crew right now? Yes, unofficial. <laughs> <laughs> They're working on it. Slowly. They're working on it. Well, that's awesome. You've been a little dumped on by rain lately, so not a whole lot of writing going on but no it's it's been a crappy couple weeks but i got out last week before i came down here so got a little ride in yeah well we're gonna see what we can do about that tomorrow i hope so all right now we got a subject we're probably gonna talk a lot more about <laughs> we're gonna get into some paintball paintball how long you been doing this shit i started playing paintball in 95 so 22 years yeah somewhere around there yeah How'd you get started? Uh, my best friend growing up, his uh, his mom and dad split up. So his dad decided he wanted to buy his affection. And whatever he wanted to do is what we got to do. And we wanted to do paintball. So his dad took us, bought all the equipment, bought us all a gun, mask, everything. We went out in the woods and for about three hours sat there trying to find somebody to shoot at. <laughs> and just got hooked on, you know, you could shoot somebody and... It'd be fun, and you know, before that it was BB guns, and your parents always yelling at you and stuff. And this was a, a safer, uh, more regulated way for us to right. goof off. It's the the army, cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, just matured, right? Do you remember what those first guns were? 
Yeah, I want to say there were some PGP little pumps or oh, yeah. something. Cool. Um, something along those lines. They might not have been those exact ones, but some old pumps. Nice. And what was your first official marker that was like yours that you were playing on? Uh, spider. They call them the Spider Classic now, but it was mm-hmm. the, the first edition Spiders. Silver body, black red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. it. Yeah. The ones we had to take all the screws out to take a, a bolt out <laughs> or anything like that or to clean anything. Yeah. And yeah. The first ball you shot would always chop. Yep, that was... <laughs> yeah, high pressure and... Oh, yeah. Uh, heavy springs. Yeah, oh, yeah. Remember them well. No bottom line adapters and fun stuff. Do you have a favorite aspect of paintball or type or style that you've played? Or I play mostly tournament style. Um, started out in the woods like most people do, especially they start playing way back then. Mm-hmm. And once I found tournament and speedball and stuff, that was kind of my thing and... I'm slowly going back towards the the woods a little bit. I've played a few scenarios in the yeah. past couple of years, yeah. and they're fun. They're still not my cup of tea, but I, I enjoy the atmosphere at the scenarios way more than a tournament yeah. atmosphere. So. Yeah, just big party, everybody gets together, shoots at each other. Absolutely, and, yeah, right. Way more fun than yeah. Yeah. the stress and the the politics that go into tournament balls. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when you're playing tournament paintball. It's the competitive le- level and the competitive nature of anything is, you know, it's basically got your rev limiter pegged. You know, you're trying to perform at your absolute best and, you know, physically, mentally, and your equipment has to perform as well. You're hoping everything falls in sync that you can walk away with a trophy. And there's a lot to that. It's not something you can keep up for a long time, that's for sure. You know, I mean, there's some guys out there that have been phenomenal, had incredible careers, but shit, I mean, anybody does it for more five than six years, it, I'm impressed. You know, oh, it's... Yeah. It, it wears you down. I mean, <laughs> whereas you go play scenario paintball, I mean, there is a big team aspect to it, but like, it's more about the fun factor. For right. Sure, right. Yeah. That's, at least that's, that's my take on it. So yeah, I have a lot more, a lot more fun at the big scenario games yeah. than the tournaments. It's a lot more pressure, a lot more stress, especially being a, you know, a team captain and stuff oh, like yeah. that. It's, it's a lot of stress level. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I've, I've been there, done that. Um, yeah, we just we just played Dreaded Legends two. That was back end of January, early February. That was in Punta Gorda, Florida. How'd you think of that? What'd you think of that? Uh, one? It was almost as good as the first one. The, yeah. the, the, I enjoyed the first one a little bit more, but this yeah. one we got to cut up more this time. So yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun. Was there a factor you think that decided why you liked one more than the other? Or? Well, I think the turnout for the first one was definitely a noticeable yeah. difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, just that level of I think everybody was super excited for the gameplay and stuff. Mm-hmm. At the first one, the second one, it was more of the hangout kind of, you know, party atmosphere and stuff, which I still enjoy. But like I said, you, you, there was a lot of people that were at the first one that didn't make it to the second one. And stuff like that. It was yeah. just a different kind of feel. Yeah, it did have a slightly different vibe. That's pretty. We, we definitely had better weather this time. Absolutely. But it, I, th- I think there was a lot of hype for the first one, and, and it was a fun event. It was a blast. You know I mean? Yeah, we we're traipsing through mud and shit, but still, you know, we there was a lot of people with a lot of fire out there. That's for sure. And in yeah. this one, I think, even though we had less rain, I think it was a little colder. And that, and yeah. then the, the the smaller numbers, I think, you know, it was just you know, it was just a different. Event. It was a little more milder for yeah. sure, right? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was still a lot of fun, yeah. and I really enjoyed the the change in the final battle and all that stuff yeah. this year. So yeah, that was that was great. That was great. They, Phil and the boys did a great job on that field. Um. Favorite paintball story? Do you have one? My favorite story would probably be the Atlantic City tournament we played. I don't even remember what year it was. It was a seven-man event for some local MPPL feeder series. We all go to Atlantic City. The night before the event, we decided to go to the casinos. And we made it back to our hotel 20 minutes before we were supposed to be at the field. Uh, one of our yeah, players, well. <laughs> Jer- Jeremy, puking out the side of the car going down the interstate. We didn't have time to stop and let him finish puking. He was puking walking onto the field. One of the players thought he was puking because of nerves, not because of the tremendous amounts of alcohol from the night before. Yeah. And I think he played the first match and then set the rest of the day. And we played a man down and really? yeah, still finished better than we did with him on the field. So oh, wow. It was a fun event. We placed horribly, but it was yeah. we had a blast. Making At least memories. at the casino. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But 
for a long time, you know, I mean, it's an old adage, but, you know, we there, there's several teams I've been on where we were a drinking team with a paintball problem. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> that team was definitely one that I can attest to on that. And with any sport that you play, I mean, that, that's a big part of it is the camaraderie that, you know, just like motorcycles, you oh, know, yeah. the, the, the bond that you build with other riders and the... That's something we didn't really touch on about Dreaded was the the ride we got to go on together. Yeah, that right? was a lot of fun. I mean, we had, uh, I think it was like 14 or 16 of us, and uh, we had people from all over. We had Tom Kearns from uh, Ohio. We had the Defenders from out of Miami. Uh, Jody Rum Runners, our order member guys, at South Carolina with Alan Parks. Uh Keith. Keith was riding. Yeah. yeah, he was riding fucking, <laughs> oh my God, that chopper. The, the, the trap chopper, right? <laughs> oh my God. I, I was nervous for Keith's life that whole ride. <laughs> it was like riding a fucking set of scissors down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Steven's wonderful directions. Oh, God. That was quite an adventure. Yeah, I made it good, though. That was great. It was, it was it was really good to bring everybody together. And then, shit, we had two or three chase cars with oh, three yeah. or four people in them. And yeah, Mary taking some awesome pictures and videos. And yeah, yeah. It was awesome. It was a great addition to, to what we already had going on, for sure. That leads right into, like, out of Dreaded Legends. Uh, Larry did some tattooing on everybody, did some tattooing on me. That's actually what he's doing here in San Diego this week. He's going to be he's gonna be drilling on a few of us. Larry owns a shop. It's just ink tattoo in Lafayette, Louisiana, and uh, incredible artist. And we're gonna talk about tattoos now. All right. How long you been doing that? Been tattooing for thirteen years. Right on. And how did that come about? All right. This is the long story that will fill up our whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I, before I started tattooing, I worked for the Girl Scouts. I was a property manager and worked in different Girl Scout camps all over the country. Right. And uh, one camp I worked for was in Texas. And our closest city was Austin, but it was still about an hour away. So one night, all the staff, it was their night off, they decided, we're going to go to town and get tattoos. I said, like, awesome, I love tattoos, I want another one, let's go. So we get in the car, drive around for like two hours trying to find a shop that can get us in and everything. We get in and... The first couple of people were getting inked, and I'm like, this guy's horrible. He is not touching me. <laughs> and that gave me the idea, well, I'm artistic. I can draw. I can probably tattoo. Yeah. So I go home that night and order a bunch of Chinese crap off the internet. and It shows up. I don't know how to put it together. I don't understand how it works, but I, I'm going to tattoo somebody with it. So my <laughs> Find someone yeah, stupid. <laughs> my, my now ex-wife... <laughs> Uh, she was my guinea pig, and I yeah. tattooed the first tattoo on her, put my stencil on, did the outline, wiped the ink, and I didn't go deep enough to even break the skin. And uh -huh. About three spots, so I had to freehand my first tattoo completely, and uh, I'm assuming she still has it. I, I don't think she erased it. Come so out. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, looking back, I'm surprised I stuck with it, but uh, I moved to Georgia still working for the Girl Scouts and I was looking for a shop to get tattooed in and found one and become pretty good friends with the owner and uh, I just begged him and said, hey man, teach me how to tattoo. I need something to do in the evenings and stuff like that and he did and yeah. I did my apprenticeship in uh, Calhoun, Georgia and tattooed for a while and the Girl Scouts were going through some changes and they weren't changes that I really wanted to be a part of so I said, well, it's make it or break it time. I'm going to go try this tattooing thing full time and never look back. Sold everything I own, moved back to my hometown in North Carolina and opened the shop. And I've been doing it. Here you are now. Nonstop. Your shop ended up moving to Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah. There you're rolling a pretty successful shop. It's going well. Um, any interesting stories with tattoos, uh, conventions you've been to or people you've met? Um. Yeah, I've tattooed uh, tattooed a lot of bands and stuff. Um, most of them are, you know, not nationally known bands. Uh, one of them is Three Pill Morning out of Minnesota. Um, I tattooed them regularly. Um, I met Eddie Vedder at a tattoo convention in Florida. Didn't know who he was. I had a crowd <laughs> of people hanging around the, the window while I was tattooing him, and I said. Uh, Dude, what is going on? He goes, yeah, I'm kind of famous. I'm in this band. I said, okay, what band? Oh, you might have heard of them, Pearl Jam. I'm like, 
Oh yeah, I've heard yeah. of the man. Didn't yeah. know who the hell you were, but right. tattooed some little initials on him and never saw really? it again. Yeah, uh, I didn't even know he had any but, tattoos. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so his dad's initials is what he got. You know, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I never saw him. He went outside and left, I guess. Um, yeah, I've been done some conventions, won some trophies, and uh, recently was in a, a tattoo magazine out of the UK. Uh, mm. Got a four-page uh, write-up in it on uh, February 1st it came out. Nice. So. Well, congratulations on that. That's Thank awesome, you. man. That's super cool. What's the worst tattoo you've ever seen? <laughs> I've, ever seen, I've seen some messages, so many yeah, huh? stuff that you can't identify um i had a girl just this past week came in it was supposed to be a rose with a vine and a butterfly and looked like a briar patch and <laughs> she wanted it covered up and three other shops told him it was impossible so that's a task i get to tackle when i get back to louisiana right uh-huh. That's, that's got to be a great sense of accomplishment when you're able to clean something up, huh? That's probably my favorite thing to do. A, a lot of shops where I'm from don't like to do cover-ups and reworks and stuff. And if it wasn't for that kind of business, I'd probably be a lot slower than I am. And yeah. I, I like the challenge and the, to give somebody something that they're happy with. Yeah, right. for, Especially from something that they hate. You know, that's pretty cool. Is there special techniques or anything? Like, say, there's someone who's interested in tattooing. Is there some kind of trick or key to successfully doing a cover up like that, or is somewhere to start? Use of color, type of art. A lot of stuff is just understanding the the cover up process. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people think, oh, I can just put, you know, tattoo A over tattoo B, and it'll cover it up. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that, you, you know, you got to take into different factors: the skin tone, color, design that you're starting with, and design you want to end up with, um, size. You know, a lot of tattoos, a successful cover-up needs to be twice the size of what you're covering up. Okay. And a lot of people don't want to go that big with a tattoo, and that really limits what you can do with a cover-up. I feel you. I feel you. Now, what's the longest you've ever tattooed for, like, one sitting, one session? 12 hours. 12 hours straight. 12 hours was the longest session I've ever done, and I'll never do it again. (laughs) (laughs) I did a 12-hour session, a big side piece on a girl. Yeah. Uh, toughest chick I've ever met. <laughs> uh, I dated her for about a year and a half after that. And, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were that impressed? Yeah, huh? I, I was. <laughs> and, uh, Sat through the grind. Yeah. Mm. That was a testament to her craziness, but learned about that a little later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, let's let's uh, let's lead into the MVP. You've been a uh, order member a little over a year now, I think. Probably a year and four months, something like yeah, that. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you were supported before that with buying MDP gear and whatnot and just, you know, rocking it. Um, what's your overall thoughts on the concept? The, the idea behind the MDP movement, I guess you would call it, is a lot about my, along the same lines as my lifestyle. You know, you try to do better for yourself and other people and, you know, reach out to people, the community, the charity, you know, the mentorship, you know, the, the whole nine yards. And that's really something that is ingrained in me, you know, and when I saw what the MVP was about and I had to be a part of it, you know, the people that are, were already involved when I joined and the people that have come aboard since then is some of the best people in not just paintball, but you know, this whole community that we're a part of and, it's an incredibly eclectic group, that's for sure. It I mean, is. We, we are diverse. We've got, you know, got some of the most straight-laced people that you can find and some of the loosest cannons on the planet, <laughs> Ryan Turner. And uh, <laughs> it, you love, I love them all. It's, it's been an amazing experience to see, you know, where this has gone to this point. We're, you know, we're infantile in our stages, but, we, you know, the goal is to leave a legacy, and hopefully that's what we're able to accomplish with this, you know. Um I know for me, some of the changes that I've seen in people already has impressed the shit out of me. You know, I just, I love it. I'm really glad that people have embraced this concept. It's great having someone like you who's, you know, come on board. You've been a strong supporter before it. And just to have you, you know, helping out, it's huge. It means a lot to me. Um, where do you want to see it go? What do you think? What do we got going? I mean, ultimately, being a part of something that's bigger than, you know, just yourself is... It's tough to find this day and age, you know, with 
with the internet and uh, the way the economy is and the way that you know the younger generations are coming up you know people don't get out and do stuff anymore people sit at home and complain and cry and whine and they need their safe spaces and all just all the stuff that this last political election was about and all that stuff and to do something that's outside of all that and to build people up and have a brotherhood and sisterhood and you know to grow all that that's what i want to see you know this just be a support system for people and communities and you know the paintball community the motorcycle community outside of you know club life and stuff like Mm. that you know where i'm from we have a big motorcycle club presence Mm. and to be able to be a part of something motorcycle related that's not club related is tough where i'm from so it's cool to have something like that yeah Yeah. we uh, we kind of fit in between some seams and you know we're, we're we're very respectful and cautious and you know we don't want to upset anyone out there and you know but we've also we're essentially trying to change the paradigms, you know, the way people right. think about stuff. You know, I mean, the, so many people have such bad images of the quote unquote biker. And, you know, and like, you know, I don't consider myself a biker. I'm sure I look like a biker to people, but, you know, and I, I don't know what you can, I consider myself a motorcyclist, you know, right. you know, and if people see a difference there, I don't know. But, like, but to me, I see a difference, you know, because bikers are like guys who live on their bike and, you know, and they live that lifestyle and it's pretty loose and wild and, you know. I'm a pretty composed guy, really. You know, I, I'm not nearly as nutty as people might think. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and and I mean, I love my bike, but man, if it's raining outside, I ain't getting on that fucker. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm 43 years old. I've been down that road, so. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's been you know, it's been great, and I I, I hope people can understand that where we're trying to go with that. Uh, yeah, you said it good. We fit. We fill a lot of holes in different areas you know the, the mm-hmm. motorcycle thing you know the paintball world we're not a paintball team we're not a paintball group or a club we, we're paintball players that yeah. you know share similar outlooks and stuff you know yeah. we we shoot guns we're not gun nuts or whatever you want to call them but we enjoy going out and shooting and yeah. and making a noise and doing what we do yeah and, outside is so much better than inside when you can when you got the time even if it's just a hike you know man i mean just simple stuff Simple stuff, and it's better for you, you know, one hundred percent. As long as you don't get ran over by a car. But you know. <laughs> I spend six days a week inside, so any chance I can get to get outside yeah. is a blessing. So you got a favorite MDP story so far? One that I can tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the best story is probably at this last Dreaded Legends at the strip club, watching you and Ryan just. <laughs> have a wonderful conversation with me refereeing the whole thing. Oh, and Lord. That was an eventful night, and that was night one. It was. It was. I got a police escort back to the hotel. It was awesome. They were, inc- hey, those Punta Gorda police, <laughs> incredibly nice officers, awesome people. They were very nice to me. They were very helpful. Um, we had a good time that night. That was a good night. Yeah. I'm glad to find out my Indian will do 95. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea, man. Oh, that was great. That was great. That, that whole week was fun. Some funny stories. You know. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot in. We got a lot in. We, uh, Me and Ryan showed up at the right place at the right time a few few occasions. Yeah, right. We refereed a few other events. So it oh. was a bunch of wild animals. It, it was a good time. Thrill, thrill seekers and free thinkers. That's what we got, you know. And some and, of us don't think. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, sometimes turn they turn that switch off for some reason. Now we got Living Legends Ten coming up. That's a big uh, paintball event. CPX Sports Juliet, Illinois, May twenty second, I think. Somewhere around there, yeah. Nineteenth through the twenty first, I think. There you go. Yeah, it's like it's always like the third weekend in May. So, yeah. what do you think of that? I'm excited. It'll be my first year going to Living Legends. I've never oh, been, really? yeah. so I'm, I'm excited. I've got a lot of the same people that were at Dreaded Legends will be up there. Some I met the first year, some I, you know, met this year. So, kind of a reunion and Living Legends ten. So it's going to be a huge party. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. I mean, I know they're pulling out all the stops because it is number ten. Yeah, and. The MDP showing that's going to be there is phenomenal. Just from what I've been, the feedback I've been getting from our members and then our supporters. I mean, we got people coming out of Canada. We got 
Actually, we got some surprise guests I can't even mention. We got people coming from a long way that are going to come get down with us, and they're just there for the party and the paintball, plain and simple. Uh, this one, just because of the logistics, we're not really able, like, Punta Gorda, it works out good for us in Florida where we're able to shoot guns, ride motorcycles, get tattoos, play paintball. You know, we get a lot included in that week. Um, CPX, just because of being in the middle of the country and with timelines and also a lot of us, you know, we work regular jobs. You can only get, get out so much. It's pretty much going to be focused party and paintball. You know, we're not going to get a lot of other stuff in there. There is a skeet range not too far from there. If we can get out and get to that, that'd be awesome. Um, Dreaded Legends, we did have a crew go do uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we're trying to get a crew together to go do uh, Feed the Vets at a VFW. I think it's a VFW right there in Juliet area Friday night. So hopefully we can get that together. We always try and you know, tie some kind of charity into everything we do. And it's, you know, we're going to do this shit anyways. We might as well try and do some good while we're doing it. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's that simple. Um, so you're in San Diego, another... What, four or five days? Yeah, leaving Tuesdays. So. What's on the hit list? What do we got going on? I'm going to tattoo the world while I'm here. <laughs> tattoo you, tattoo yeah. porno, um, whoever else shows up. Yeah. Apparently we're having a big party at porno's house. Yeah. Uh, porno's pad. Yeah. Tarantino's sausage. We got to throw another shout out to yeah, right. those guys. Another shout out to Petey. <laughs> yep, yep. So, well, we're going to do our best to make this week good for you. I appreciate you taking the time and sitting down with me. Like I said, this is the essentially the test run, the first monkey shot into space. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how it goes. I think this one went well. Me and you could talk for hours, but uh, we don't want it to seem too canned. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and call it. Cool deal. Thank you, brother. No problem.